How's it going everybody? Razine here. The other day I uploaded this picture of my true colour moon I did. Now it's received quite a good reception and a lot of people were asking the process I did and I included, I included the process I did in the picture's description but it got such a strong reception and, and quite a few people actually asked me how do I do it, how was it done, that I thought that I'll make a video. So this is the final product that I was end with, ended up with and I stacked 655 images. Yeah I didn't think I took that many either. Uh, the equipment, like it says here, it was on the 15th of September and the equipment I used was a Skywatcher Astrophotography Newtonian uh, 150 aperture 750 focal length f5 to that I put my Canon 760D on it in prime focus uh, it was mounted on a Skywatcher HEQ5 which was just being controlled by a hand control I didn't even polar line it properly and things like that because I wasn't trying DSO I was just I went out for the moon and it was a super clear night there was not a single cloud in the sky anywhere and the seeing conditions were pretty good because the stars just weren't scintillating at all that much and so I just put my uh, camera on and I switched it to remote continuous shutter at ISO 100 and uh, uh, shutter speed 1 3 20th and I just used an intervalometer to hold the shutter sh closed and left it just taking po photos until the battery basically died and I ended up with something stupid like how many was it these are all my raw files 873 pictures that's one of the first things to say about doing photography especially astrophotography night photography it's a good idea just in photography in general just to use raw files switch your camera to raw format uh, but things like this, it really helps because you can just drag. So it, the raw data has got so much more data in it than a JPEG picture that your camera will take, and you can just pull so much more data back out of that picture. Anyway, to get on, the three programs I used was PIP, Registax, and then Photoshop CC16 in that order. Uh, I'll put links down in the description for PIP and Registax. Now. First thing, let's see if PIP actually works. Yep, there it goes. Now for this, for the actual PIP and Registax section, I'm just going to stack two, uh, ten pictures for sake of time. Um, but the actual picture we'll be editing up is the one down here. That's the one I used and edited for this picture. And that is the 655 pictures on it. So first, when you open up PIP, you'll get something like this. At least I do. And the first thing you want to do is go to File and add source files. Now it'll bring up your uh, it'll bring up a, a, an explorer and you just obviously navigate to where your files are and like I said for this we're only going to use 10 photos for this. Yep so we're just going to press open. It's going to say that because it's in, uh, more than one source it's going to go to join mode which is fine. It's going to wait, it's going to bring a preview up any second now and that's one of the photos it has in the directory. You can, I, I just end up, I just close that there. The first thing to do, I normally, what I do is down here in optimization is select solar lunar full disk because it's not a close up, but we're doing the full disk of it. Input, I don't think I actually bothered with any of this. My pip likes to mess about a lot of time and I have to keep reinstalling it, so I always got to check these. Processing options, here's one important thing is to deselect this you do not want it to be converted to monochrome or else you will not be able to do the re, the, re, uh, the true colour edit on it because you'll be left with the black and white now the next thing is down here in cropping this is the way that Pip is going to crop the picture basically as you can see at the minute in the default setting it's, it's far too close up because you set it to solar lunar full disk it will automatically centralise the moon but what you need to do here is just adjust your settings. If it's cropped too tightly on the moon like that one was, you need to increase it. But if it's too far out and you want the moon to be bigger, you need to decrease these values. And I always go in the squares. I always make sure it's a square image. 
Now, because I've already done this image, I know that I need about 2300 in both. And then you can just press test options up here. Let it process real quick. And there you go. See, the test options button just brings up that preview again. So now because of that, we can see that the moon is nicely centralized. It's got some dead space around each side of it, so it's not just caged in. It's kind of following the rule of space. You don't tinker with the X or Y offset. No point in doing that. Quality options, I leave normal. I mean, on the PIP website, it did say something about tinkering these, but I, I never bothered to do it. Now, in output options, you want to make sure you select TIFF. And it will say monochrome here, but that's because it can just do color and monochrome. But you want to select uh, it to be a TIFF setting. And I'm going to just put these, for the sake of argument, I'm just going to put these onto the uh, thingy. I'm just going to put these onto the desktop right here. Now, with all that selected, I, I, I don't tinker with anything else because I've not bothered to look into it or nor I really know what they do because I've not looked into it. You want to go to the Do Processing tab now. And they'll do this, and I'm not too sure what that is. But you just press Start Processing. And because we've only got 10 files, it shouldn't take too long. So what we've basically done is obviously we've, we've put these 10 pictures into PIP. And we've centralized the crop. We've made sure it's in color. And, you know, we've got the picture how we want to do it. So now that... We've taken, we've put settings into PIP, and what it's now going to do is copy all them settings over all, to all the pictures we've selected, so that they're all going to be consistent. And here we go. Here's our ten images. You can see there's 100%. It marks them by quality as well. Now, if we open one of these, you can see that it's in color. It may look a bit black and white, but it is actually in color because we deselected the monochrome option. Right. Bear in mind, remember where they are, they're on the desktop under YouTube Moon, but I'm just going to close this here. You keep them in TIFF for Registax. Registax, to my knowledge, unless someone else knows, but I've not been able to put raw files straight into Registax, which is fine. Now I close that. Now we open Registax. I'll wait for it to do its thing. Now what I do is literally just bring up the folder where my TIFF, my PIP settings were, my PIP, PIP pictures, oh boy. Drag them in. Get rid of that. Stretch intensity, yeah, why not? And here's the moon. Now it says down here, it's got 10 frames. I'm using all eight. What I normally used to find is if you don't, if you use all your cores in your computer, excuse me, Registax used to crash or it would freeze up and stuff like that. So I used to only use one CPU. But I don't know if there's a new version of Registax or what, but it's just suddenly become a lot more stable. I can use all eight CPUs now. All I did was then was just click, click align points and let it all just automatically set. It's saying it's the weakest amount, but it's what worked. You can see here I've already selected before I previously used select the best 100% of frames. I think for the other one I did, I selected the best 75% of frames, which is why I got 655 instead of obviously the 873 that I do actually have. Click align. And it's going to do the it's going to do its thing now, and I'm just gonna how long is it gonna say? It's gonna take half a minute apparently. Oh no, it's done. Limit. Basically, limit is this bit down here, like we just spoke about. We're only doing 10 frames, so I'm not gonna limit it at all. I know I know they're all about 99 to 100% quality that Pip said. So I'm not gonna I'm just gonna leave it at 100% best frames. But this is where I selected 75% for my other picture. Then you click limit. I don't bother with this because this is going to create an AVI and we don't want that. We want a picture. We want just one picture at the end of it. Click stack. And this is where it can take a while. Now one of the things about Registack which I always found was that when it's doing its thing, when it's aligning, when it's stacking, when it goes like this, just leave it. Do not keep clicking on it. Do not try to minimize it. Just don't keep coming back to check it. It'll flash. It'll tell you when it's done. It'll, the, the icon at the bottom will flash. You just leave it do its thing or else it ends up crashing. At least that's in my personal experience. So we're going to come back to this 
unless it already is done. I was saying about half a minute left of building final multi core stack. It's done because we're going to use 10. Click up here, show full image. So this is our stacked moon. Now, go into Wavelet. This is where you can start tinkering with it, making it a bit more sharp. It will, any settings you change, it will just show you a little square box somewhere on the image to give you a preview of what your change is. So I normally will put it here. I'll click here. I can't remember what this part of the moon is called, but this create a mark, this can you mark it. Click there because that means it's going to put the preview box over there. And because it's a nice sharp area anyway, it will really help stand out what happens here. The only thing I did was I selected this sharpen box on layer 1 to 0 0.25. I didn't put any denoise in or anything like that. Then I changed this slider to about 25, I think it was. And you can see the preview, it's done here. And that's just sharpened up. So now I'm happy with that. Well, let's see what it does. This is non-destructive. You can always reset all these options. Reset Wavelet. You can reset all this. It's non-destructive. If you're not happy with what you've done, just reset it. Try again. Click the wall. And as you can see, it's going incrementally across the screen like it's printing it out, basically. And it's just going to work. It's sharpened. It's going to work all the settings that you've chose on the right under the functions, on the left under the Wavelets. It's just going to work it all through. And there we go. That's that's the final thing now. This is where you click save image and you'd go along with it. Now you'd save this as a TIFF. Always work with TIFF and save it somewhere you can obviously easily access. I'm not gonna bother to do that because I've got a better image to work with. Now I'm just gonna open Photoshop. I'm gonna cut the video here because it takes a few seconds to load up. So here we are now in Photoshop. As you can see, I've opened up our moon image. And now this is the previous one that I've stacked, my own personal stacking of 655, not the 10 that I showed earlier in the video, just to show you the process of the pip and reg stacks. So it's got a better signal to noise ratio, at least that's the theory. And I've opened up this one here. This is the, uh, the one I showed you at the beginning of the video. This is the one that seems to have been given a good reception, and I'm quite happy of it. Excuse me. So I'm just going to use this as a bit of reference. So this is what you start with. This is something about like this you'll end with. The first thing I do always is I just duplicate the background and hide it. Don't know why, that's just something I do. Now, one of the weirdest steps I'm going to have to do, I've done it without doing this step, and it just messes up completely. So, instead of just duplicating the layer, press Control A, Control Shift C, and then Control V. So it's added another layer here, and I'm just going to delete that layer now because I don't. I've never had to use it. Watch me now. I've forgotten something. Now I'm going to need that layer. So yeah, it's just copied the entire layer for some reason. Like I said, unless I do this step, it always messes up. First thing, image, auto color, and it looks like it's completely grayscaled it. But it hasn't. It's just adjusted the white balance or things along them lines. I'm not 100% sure. I was in daylight white balance, I think I was. So the first thing I do is image adjustments, brightness contrast. I up them by 35 each. Now it's getting really quite blown out here. Uh, I'm not sure where the histogram is on here. I've never really used a histogram on here, but it'll be this will start going to the really right hand side. Watch the curves lie to me now. There you go. There's the, well, there's the histogram. So now we just play with the curves. So you can see we can dim it down a bit here because the left hand side of the histogram, look all this, the left hand side of the histogram is about blacks and dark colors. The right hand side is about whites and light colors and all the spectrum in between. So we're just going to fiddle with the, the curves to add some more contrast, a bit more sharpness, and just to just to lower it down a bit. I'm happy with that. This is complete personal preference. You do what you want. But you can, I mean, even this is looking a little bit overprocessed to me, but you can obviously completely make it look com absolutely overprocessed. And it's, I personally don't like that look. So I'm just going to leave it like this. So to recap, we've done auto color and we've played with the brightness and contrast and the levels. The next important thing to do 
is it doesn't matter how clean you think your image is, you're going to have to do this step. Go to Filter, Noise, Reduce Noise. And I reduce it by a strength of 8. And this, this, it's like putting a base coat down when you're about to do some painting. It just adds, it, it smooths the layers out so the next step has a nice even surface to go over it. So you, if you, when you've done this, try it without doing the noise reduction step and you'll see what happens. You'll get a really, really pixelated and grainy result and it won't be nice at all. So click OK on the strength 8 noise reduction. Let Photoshop do its thing. At this point, I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'm going to call the original layer noise reduction layer. And I'm going to put this one into its own folder. So now, put, go down to here, image adjustments, put a hue saturation layer over it. And then you're going to want, like, you're going to have to fight the temptation to just crank this up completely. As you can see, the colors are already coming out now. If you if you put it up to extreme, just to show you, you can see all the different minerals in the moon surface. So we're actually really nearly there. The important thing here is to go in increments. So I go to plus 13 and then close it. And then you just layer it. Duplicate. Just keep duplicating the layers. And like I used the um, analogy earlier about painting on a base coat, this is like using a lot of thin layers. You can see, because I've zoomed out, it looks really pixelated, but as soon as you zoom in a bit more, there you go. Now you can see that the detail is beginning to come out. So I'm going to probably do it another two. See what that looks like. No, maybe another two. Okay, I'm happy with that. As you can see, that's another personal preference thing. From back here, this is lying to you. This is a horrible mess. When you zoom in, you can see the layers. You can see the true color. Now I'm going to minimize that. I'm going to collapse that group. Now I'm going to take my noise reduction layer, the one I duplicated, I'm going to move it on top of this group. Yep. And then change its blending mode to luminosity. Oops. Luminosity. And you think, oh, okay, what's that done? Zoom in. What's it done? It's just helped even things out a little bit so it's added some contrast to the image and I think it also adds a bit of sharpness as you can see they look like they've gone off alignment ever so slightly I mean you can try and fiddle with that I mean I think that would just be my eye yeah but I'm just going to I'm going to leave that I'm not sure what's gone on there there's no reason at all that it's changed position. I don't think it has. Let's zoom in here. No, it's just it's just adding like another layer of shadows back to it. So there's there's your, there's your true color moon. I mean, if you think you've ever done that, just take some of these layers out. See, I've cancelled out five layers, six layers. No, add another one back in. Or add another three back in, four back in. Let's see what happens. Okay, I prefer that more. See, the view of this is just like anything digital, really. It's very non-destructive. You can make changes on the fly as you see fit. Okay, that's it done, basically. That's the true moon, true color moon done. The last thing, I'm going to delete this background now because I know I'm done. Also, it's going to probably interfere the next step. All right, right click, flatten image. And there you go. Now from here, you can duplicate this again. Like I, this is my full little force of habit. From here, you can go back to image adjustments and change your contrast again if you really want. Make it darker, make it brighter. So you can darken it down a bit, a little bit more contrast. It's, it, it's open to what you want to do. But that's it. So now it's little. It's, if you want to add on to this, you can obviously just add text at the bottom, for example, things like that. And from there, cancel text. But that's the edit done. From there, you can do whatever else you want to do with it. Now you flattened it. I obviously I suggest saving the PSD as its own file. So then you've got it safe. You've got it backed up. There it is. You can always access it. You don't have to do the flatten image step. I normally don't, but 
I would just normally, um, like we did at the beginning, Control A, Control Shift C, Control V, and then paste that another layer back into another, somewhere else. Because it'll do the same thing. It can it copies all and paste. But there you go. There's your there's your true color edit done. And I think it looks pretty nice actually. Let's compare it to the other one. So you can see on this one that we've just done together, it's a bit more saturated. So I obviously didn't use as many layers, or I did some. Uh, I've changed something else. But yeah, there you go. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned how to do it. Um, if you want, you can send me some pictures or something like that. Just uh, if you've got them on image hosting websites or anything like that, put them in the comments. Let me see. I'll, I'll love to see them. But this this was this is technically my second True Moon edit I done. This was my first True Moon edit I done, and I was so happy with it. Uh, and the reception it received, I got completely taken back by it. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. You've learned it. You've if you've played along with it, I hope you have something like this now. If not, if you can go back now and do it, just the fi the final things to remember is to always shoot raw. Make sure pip doesn't monochrome it. Make it black and white, or else you cannot do this. It deletes all color data off the file. Uh, yeah, raw tiffs. Make sure pip doesn't desaturate it into monochrome. Stack it. Play with it. So yeah, thanks for watching. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, I've not ever made a tutorial before, so I'm sorry if I've rambled on a bit. But yeah, thanks for watching. Enjoy editing your moon videos. Clear skies, everybody, and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.